With millions of Ukrainian refugees fleeing for safety and civilians dying, we have to ask, what is next? What's possible? Relief? Is that possible? To help us navigate some of these questions is Ambassador Kurt Volker. He's former U.S. Representative for Ukraine Negotiations and former U.S. Ambassador to NATO. Mr. Ambassador, is it time for a humanitarian no-fly zone? Uh, I believe so. Uh, we are seeing horrific images and attacks on civilians in Ukraine. Uh, over two million refugees outside the country, probably more than that displaced inside the country. These are women, these are children, we've seen orphans, uh, where their orphanage was attacked, having to be relocated to Western Ukraine. And this is going to continue and get worse. Uh, Putin is on a, a mission to destroy Ukraine. And we need to do everything we can to protect civilians and a humanitarian focused no-fly zone where we are not seeking to attack Russian forces, but we'll protect civilians if necessary, I believe is an important step to take. And more than two dozen of the top names in foreign policy in the U.S. agree with you. They're supporting this humanitarian no-fly zone. Their letter, which was published by Politico, says to the Biden administration in part, quote, impose a limited no-fly zone over Ukraine, starting with protection for humanitarian corridors that were agreed upon in talks between Russian and Ukrainian officials on Thursday. Mr. Ambassador, the words that popped out to me there are starting with. Yeah. You know, because things don't yeah. always go according to plan, especially in a hot war. Doesn't this inevitably grow? Doesn't it become more dangerous as time goes on? No, one, one cannot uh, overstate the dangers here um, or underestimate the dangers, excuse me. Uh, it is possible that this could put U.S. or NATO country aircraft into direct confrontation with Russian aircraft. That's not something that we seek, but it is a risk that we may need to take in order to protect civilians. When it says... Beginning with, you know, those measures, what we're talking about in this letter are humanitarian corridors to get civilians out and to get humanitarian goods in so that people have a chance of survival. Uh, I think the next step to that, if it comes to that, would be over Kyiv itself as a city and western Ukraine. It would be a wider area, uh, which I think may also be necessary because uh, we want to protect civilians wherever they are in that western part of Ukraine. But the other word that is in there is limited because we are not saying to do all of Ukraine. We are not saying to get close to Russian borders. We are not saying to engage any ground forces from the air, specifically the opposite. We would communicate directly to Russia. We are not intending to attack your forces, either on ground or in the air, unless fired upon, or unless your aircraft uh, come into this no-fly area and attack civilians. We'll seek to escort you out, but if you refuse, that would be the only context in which we would be uh, firing upon a Russian force. One more question on this, because Vladimir Putin has indicated he considers even all these financial sanctions, maybe yes. people entering a war. Uh, if we do put NATO aircraft in the air, if there is some sort of engagement, do we just have to acknowledge if we do impose this with the best of intentions that we could very well be entering the war? Right. Just as you said, uh, Putin has already said that he considers us uh, to be at war with him. And so uh, we have to take that into account. Moreover, whenever Putin says anything, we have to ask ourselves not just what he is saying, but why is he saying it? He is saying it because his forces are doing poorly in Ukraine, and he wants to intimidate or prevent the West from doing anything to help Ukraine. And so uh, he is hoping to deter us. Uh, in fact, I think he is very concerned that our presence, even helping just protect civilians, would thwart his war aims in Ukraine. And that's why he is saying this. You've been at the negotiating table in the past. Very few people can say that when it comes to Ukraine. Short of either side folding, which looks unlikely, what do you yeah. see as the fastest and likeliest route of bringing this war to a close? I think it, we have to let the sanctions work. We have to give them time. That is doing devastating damage to Russia's economy. And people in Russia, including in the leadership in Russia, know this and will see this. Putin is gambling that he could defeat Ukraine before those sanctions get too bad. We need to give the Ukrainians every measure of support, armaments, intelligence, uh, the MiG-29s that were announced today, um, and I would argue also a no-fly zone to help the Ukrainians hang on. Because if they can hang on, I think it is Russia that's ultimately going to feel that this is too costly.
You talk about us helping Ukrainians to hang on. China appears to be maybe taking on the role of helping Russia to hang on. They are appearing in this role as booster almost. Axios is reporting China is now scrubbing social media in the country of anti-war footage and post and only promoting state sanctioned angles and, and video. What is China up to here? Uh, China is trying to cut, carve its own course through this. I don't believe that China supports the aggressiveness, the brutality, or even the fact that uh, Russia is attacking another sovereign state. Uh, those are things China is not comfortable with. But it doesn't want its own population to get riled up against Russia. It wants to just stay out of this. And China's long-term interests are regional uh, for Taiwan, uh, for its claims against some of the other states there in the South China Sea. It will pursue those. It may even pursue them militarily. But it doesn't want to get wrapped up into Russia's war. Finally, Mr. Ambassador, if President Biden were on the other end of the line today, what is the first piece of advice you'd give him? Uh, I'd say, Mr. President, everything you've done so far has been needed and necessary, but it's not enough to save Ukraine. Uh, we need to do everything now, not wait for the next shoe to drop. We have to act urgently to protect civilian lives and to make sure that Ukraine survives. Mr. Ambassador Kurt Volker, thank you. Thank you so much.